So let's take some steps back. How do opioids really impact the body and cause addiction? When it comes to addiction, the body says you don't have a choice of whether you want to use. Your brain is telling you that you need to use. People in the throes of addiction will give up everything in their lives just because their brain is telling them you only need this to survive. Heather Fountain takes a look at how that desperation can lead addicts to a jail cell. And my face went through the windshield, the truck flipped over. For the first time, I was handed a bottle of painkillers. James Sweezy was 21 years old. Suddenly, nothing else mattered. The painkillers came before everything else in my life. In his decade of addiction, James played tag with police, arrested, bonded out again and again, until a DUI cost him 72 hours behind bars. I wasn't able to take anything, uh, and the withdrawal symptoms kicked in. Sweezy wasn't alone. Metro Corrections Assistant Director Steve Durham says 30,000 people go through the jail every year. Nearly 10,000 go straight to detox. Any given day, between 40, 60, 80, sometimes as much as 120 individuals that are going through withdrawal here in Metro Corrections. It's a pain. Imagine the worst flu you've ever had times 10. This jail is trying to take away. Medication-assisted treatment, along with counseling and recovery, is the gold standard. Medication-assisted treatment, or methadone. A red liquid and an opioid itself, taken like cough syrup. The medication does help to reduce the withdrawal symptoms that people have so that they don't experience that severe withdrawal. This is a pathway for us. Um, individuals coming to this, kind of a captured audience, and we have an opportunity to offer them an opportunity to change the way their life is going. The jail already administers methadone to women locked up and pregnant, but a program announced in May would extend the treatment to other inmates. You know, very quickly into the planning stage, we'll be finding ways to identify individuals who can best benefit from medication-assisted treatment. Treatment that, for some, is controversial. What's the, the process to determine if someone qualifies? So how are they, you know, assessing? What's the follow-up look, look like? Henry Lucas is a therapist who worked with thousands in recovery after his own journey to sobriety. You know, medication isn't the only, the only treatment. You know, again, it's, it's gonna decrease and maybe bring some, some comfort to the, the physiological symptoms, right? But it's not the end-all, be-all. James tried methadone as a treatment. I think uh, it can be a good thing but they're playing with fire. And remembers the withdrawal was worse than any other opioid. An advocate for abstinence that worries about after incarceration, a costly $12 a day for a dose at local clinics. What happens when their feet hits the streets? Where is the off ramp? Dr. Lori Kaloya with the Department of Public Health and Wellness says it depends on each person. It does there have to be an off ramp necessarily. Um, I think there are some people who believe that absolutely the ultimate goal is to have people be abstinent and not use any drugs at all, but I think that we are finding that that is not necessarily the case across the board. Henry believes long-term treatment is necessary no matter what, but success is subjective. If they say, well, I'm on methadone and I haven't used heroin, if that's what their goal was, is to not use heroin, then I'd say that would be a success for them. James chooses abstinence, clean and sober for six years, and hopes others will be able to get there too, one way or another. Is it a bad idea to put these people on in jail, to put them on something that could protect them? I don't think so. I think it's something that's gonna require a lot of the jail listening to the recovery community.